that you chanced because of your research and one story that you chanced because of luck and you can't say aishar motors and hero motor pop so <laughs> that's ruled out okay so <clears throat> where we made it because of research was bharti airtel i think can i go with that yes of course okay so <laughs> so that yeah. i could see uh, because right now telecom is very hot and uh, it is very relevant so <clears throat> in 2003 uh, india didn't have telephones i mean we had about 40 50 million fixed lines in a country of billion people and we had 50 million phones and it was almost impossible to get the phones and even for the government to provide despite all the intentions and here comes without uh, wireless and uh, you could execute like uh, every quarter they were growing by 100% the demand was so so massive and yet the stock was available at uh, uh, the uh, uh, bharti stock was available for 5000 crores at 25 bucks and uh, that was that was the only company listed and incidentally that was the best and the largest we could figure out when uh, on in february 2003 when mr mittal announced that they have broken even we could figure out in next 5 years this company is going to make at least 25000 crores and the stock was held by 5000 crores in next 2 years the stock went up by 50 times from 25 to 1200 so it it happens i mean in this kind of companies and in this is the era of internet everything is exponential mm. and you'll get lot of stories and more so going forward which will start from uh, 100 crores or 200 crores you would not not heard the name and suddenly it'll become global and uh, it will become few billion dollars um what has taken for hdfc bank or bharti or many companies to go uh, travel uh, 10 15 billion dollars or 20 billion dollars 20 years it will take maybe 20 months uh, 20 quarters for them to just go like rocket because now the market place or opportunity place is global no more local okay okay uh, well uh, uh, madhu the uh, problem for the uh, investor or the lay investor is how do you choose from the myriad funds Uh, in the first place let us categorize how do you choose uh, how does he position himself between debt and equity funds balanced funds uh, uh, within a, um, uh, uh, fixed income a whole range of funds near term and longer term so first of all you know this is a there are now lot of very seasoned distributors who are available wealth managers who are available my friend sitting here nj who have built such a credible platform for uh, retail investors and so many other distributor friends who are sitting here i am saying if you are someone who is doing it on a part time basis just on a casual basis ye 400 fund hai aag band karta hu idhar laga ke i i should put my money there i i have some half half cooked knowledge so that is not the way so there are people who are available secondly if you want to do it yourself there are you know there is a crisel there is a value research there are lots of people who are available for you to help the thumb rule which i have uh, which i have practiced that i have told people to practice a your mutual fund portfolio should not look like your 50 funds otherwise then you are better off choosing 50 stocks you know so you should have a maximum of 10 12 funds in your portfolio secondly that you know this is one place where experience plays a big role So you have to go with people who have a track record of investing because yes, there are a lot of seasonal industries, a lot of seasonal funds which do well, but they go off uh, when the season is over. So you have to bet on people who have a very consistent, a good track record of performing. So if you keep these two or three things in mind, uh, in mind, then it is easy to construct a portfolio. But the difficult part is that you know when the market goes to a tough, when the market goes to a challenges. at that time you don't listen to your neighbor you don't listen to what has come in that sense print or media and don't panic basically the, the trick is to just continue to hold on to your investment having faith in the fund manager as well as in the market and that's when you make uh, real return okay uh, madhu you know I, you you say and that's your favorite line these, these days uh, investors should ask uh, <coughs> uh, kit, kitna lena hai aur kitne time ke liye lena hai from your personal experience uh, one stock that you thought uh, you should have bought more and you know should have st- stayed long invested longer yeah, your personal do, experience do dukti nas pe haath rakh diya yaar there are so many of them so you know when uh, when we bought siemens for instance you know we were very early we bought jindal steel and power in 2002 3 these companies were not even heard of we bought jindal steel and power when the market cap was 300 crores and at the peak the market cap went to 70000 crores 
We bought DVD lab in the market cap of 140 crores at the beginning of IPO. At the peak, it went to 40,000 crores. I think if you ask me, you ask the mistake uh, to someone, the only regret which I have uh, looking back is I wish I did not discover many new stocks. And I just kept on buying what we discovered in that time. I think we would have, uh, we would have made a greenish book of world record if we had stuck to our investments, what we identify very early on. So that the thing was that, you know, we could not buy enough or maybe we needed this experience which has come over a period of time. So something going a little bit wrong in the company or in the market or, you know, from time to time markets really underperforming and challenging our conviction. So I'm sure we have learned and uh, the next 20 years we will uh, uh, we will have a much better performance in this regard than we had in the past. <clears throat> What's the learning point in your career that made you, uh, you know, as an investor? Yeah, so I'm, I think that's very important because Ramdev mentioned at the start that you should have 100% in equities. And, uh, you know, there are people who have 140% in equities uh, because they have debt. And I think leverage is the death knell of investors because it takes away your flexibility. So I was very fortunate to learn this in 1991 because I was actually, and in those days we had Badla, and I used to trade stocks, and this was well before I started my professional career. I was short Tata Steel. Uh, going into an afternoon session, uh, Tata Steel was going to report post-market, and I think the market started talking about uh, uh, a better than expected earnings. There was no CNBC those days. We only had the PTI screen, and the ticker used to come with a lag of 15 minutes, okay? So you were only reliant on the broker for the latest quote. And... Uh, so you got the bad news 15 minutes later? No, I didn't, get the, I didn't get the bad news at all. I just saw the share price run away from me. And by the time the market was closing, I had lost my entire father's life savings because I was on a levered trade, okay? At 2.05, I called him up very sheepishly and I said, you know, I've lost everything. What do I do? So he said, what do you think you should do? So I said, we should double up. This looks like, a, because by then Tata Steel had reported. And I said, it's a blowout earnings. The stock is gapping higher. So he said, do whatever you want. I had lost everything. I doubled up. Next morning, the stock went up and I covered. And that was it. I stopped doing leveraged trades. And after that, I became an investor. And uh, I think that was a very, very good sasta learning experience <laughs> jake any any personal experience that uh, you can recall well personal experience in the sense that uh, the stock market was new to us i mean uh, we who came from uh, delhi actually thought that this was the den of vice as it was so i saw it first time when i was working in Citibank, and uh, so i learned actually by investing my uh, my monthly salary as it were into whatever little that we had into couple of stocks glaxo this that and the other but, uh, I mean, the fact that you could make much more than you could make, uh, you know, at work, in a sense, tempts you to say, can you do this on your own, and so on and so forth, and hence, you know, the move to prime, etc. But I think the, uh, the real takeaway from this is that you have to make money where the crowds aren't there. So the, the important issue here is not so much... So, Sometimes you can call it the arrogance of youth, you can call it the arrogance of intelligence or whatever limited you think you have, that you want to go out and, you know, that's where, so my fetish, if you will, is for small and unknown, unheard of stocks and that which you have to do a little more work on. And I think that's what, uh, you know, set me on the, on the path to trying to discover some of these. You know, one thing which I didn't mention is that uh, this was May of 91, so you guys will have no idea what happened after that. The Sensex one went... One more thing happened around 91. The Sensex went up five-fold in the subsequent nine months. So, so just look at my luck. Okay. I, I was 11, so I, I, I won't know. <laughs> Madhu will remember that. It went from 900 to 4500 in nine months. Really? Okay. Well, this was... Uh, I think we have to take a break on this note. Uh, from uh, episodes of, uh, uh, you know, from your own personal lives, uh, we are news birds and now we want your reactions uh, to the news that's happening around us. Uh, Rhythm, let's start with you. Uh, what will Trump do to the markets? Uh, are we, uh, is he going to create a trade war and therefore spoil the good game that's going around in equities all over the world? Or are the next uh, two, three, five years going to be good years for growth and for equities? 
So, Lata, I think sequencing is important with respect to uh, the U.S. President's policies, and uh, there is not enough clarity right now for me to actually make that uh, call. Uh, at one end, he is likely to offer tax cuts to corporate America. At the other end, he's going to probably levy a border adjustment tax. Though I felt in his last speech he has diluted uh, uh, the impact of that uh, or, or his intentions. So depending on the sequence, it will determine how the market behaves, say, in six-month time frame. But I don't think the market will care that much because right now we are in a global reflation trade. Global growth is high, heading higher. Global inflation expectations are heading higher. Rates are heading higher. This is a good environment for equities. So you can see that rub off into India. 80% of what's happening in India since uh, December is global. It's not local. And you can see the correlations are high. And uh, global uh, economy is actually surprising on the upside.